So recently, I stumbled upon a very good deal on this used Rotring 600 fountain pen. And uh, before I got going with it, I wanted to give it a really nice kind of cleaning up. Uh, I hesitate to call it a restoration, which it doesn't need that level of service. But I did want to, uh, you know, give the pen a cleaning and get it working in tip-top shape before I got going with it. This specific unit is a Rotring 600. It's one of the Levenger models, which means it's the uh, one of the later generations. Uh, sometimes people call it the fourth wave or fourth generation or something like that. But it's the, all the that is very blurry. But there are some distinguishing features to it. <laughs> Most prominently, it has Levenger printed on it right there. Levenger was a uh, kind of like a mail order brand. You used to get a paper catalog, and they would you could buy pens and different stationary items like organizers and and that sort of stuff. So uh, they're still around. I think they still have a website. Anyway, this is the Levenger model fountain pen. This indicator here was on medium, but it can turn to the different ones that were available. Fine, extra fine. L, I think, was left-handed, double broad. And then the nib has an M here. You can see it's a little messy here. I'm getting some fountain pen ink on my hand. I don't know quite where that was from. The nib here is in good shape. Clearly, it's kind of dirty. I haven't really inspected it yet. I guess this thing was put away uh, dirty and never used. Fairly common for a used fountain pen, but seems to be in good shape. You can see here, you see that little silver thing? That's usually called a lug at least within the Rotring world. And this is an indicator of a very late model Rotring 600, either fountain pen or rollerball. They have these little spring-loaded, at least I think they're spring-loaded. I never took it apart, but these little uh, pieces. That holds the cap secure. Older models only use these little gear pieces to hold it on, and the gears would wear out, and then the cap wouldn't stay on. The the sort of the last push of that Rotring 600 used these little uh, lug pieces in addition to the gears and the caps stayed more secure. The downside of it is clearly it's a little ugly. Also, it becomes a lot harder to push the cap on. The old ones have a really nice smooth action to it. These ones, it requires more force. It's not, it's not terrible by any measure, but it does require more force. These models, this generation, I don't think it says it anywhere. These are the ones that were made in Japan, whereas previously they were made in, in Germany. I think some actually say West Germany on them, depending on uh, how far you go back. Oh, there's the M indicator. So that's the original sticker. So whoever used this thing did not give it a lot of mileage before kind of throwing it into a box for 20 years. Also, a good indicator of how much wear it has is how worn out these gears are. And you can see they're not chewed up or worn out at all. It's more visible on the black where that brass gets worn, but here you can see that it's in very good shape. So this is a uh, like near mint condition Rotring 600. I would hesitate to call it mint. People get picky about that, but let's open it up. And yeah, so someone clearly was using this. They put the cartridge in it, they sold it, and they didn't bother to clean it before shipping it out. Again, fairly common for buying fountain pens used. Usually you wouldn't see it on like a more of a collector type pen, like a Rotring 600, but yeah, that's that's fairly common. Sometimes these are, you know, it's found in a someone's drawer and then they, you know, and they just sell it or, you know, you're clearing out an estate and they're like, ah, what's the pen? I'll sell a pen. Maybe I'll get a couple bucks for it. So, but I think someone is using this fairly recently, but this looks to be almost sort of right, which means to me it was being used within the past, probably under the last six months. So you think whoever's using it would have known a little bit better, but it doesn't matter. Uh, I have it now, and I'm going to give it a, a good cleanup before using it. So I usually just clean my fountain pens with some, you know, just like uh, warm water and uh, maybe, maybe a little dish soap, but usually just warm water. Uh, but this time I'm going to use this fountain pen cleaning kit. This is from uh, Platinum, so you know it's going to be fairly high quality. I think I've done a video on this one earlier. I just want to give this thing a really nice deep clean, uh, and I did buy this kit maybe a year ago, two years ago, something like that. So I figured I might as well use it before I just end up losing it or something like that. So I'm going to do the clean 
with this kit right now. And looks like I have two of the leading little cleaning packets left. I'm just going to throw these in some plastic cups. Obviously, only one of them. Put in some plastic cup with like, uh, I think, 100 milliliters of water. Yeah, 100 milliliters of water. I'll let it soak for a couple hours. And then I will purge it with this little tube here. And then we'll see how clean it is. Ahead of giving it that cleaning in the, in the platinum solution, I'm just going to go over it with some of these. These are just typical alcohol wipes. I find this to be a nice way just to kind of remove any surface grime. Usually there's some adhesive on these. Uh, clearly, if I'm touching it with inky hands, I'm getting some ink on it. I could see some marks here where the pen was uh, just a little dirty. Again, that's common with a fountain pen. So I'm just going to give it a good clean. I'm going to avoid... Oh, looks at the sticker. Sticker's on this side. I'm going to avoid cleaning off that sticker. I think it's pretty cool that that thing has survived the past, uh, you know, what, 30 years almost. So I'll keep that one on there. And this thing's actually in pretty good shape. And it's nice that inside, it's hard to tell from the, from the camera angle. I don't think any real ink has spilled on the inside. When that happens, it can be really messy. And you have to start getting in there with Q-tips and sorts of other things. And it's just, it gets to be a pain. And then you got to worry about damaging the inner cap there or the spring there. The Levenger logo, I would love to remove that, but they're on there pretty well. Like uh, uh, rubbing alcohol is not going to do it. Maybe you could use a, a stronger adhesive remover or a, a stronger uh, sort of solvent or something to remove it. Uh, I don't have anything like that handy. I don't know if you could use like a, a Goo Gone or what, but I'm sure it is removable. I've, I've never had a good luck removing them and I'm always hesitant to do something that's going to damage the coating. So again, I typically leave them on there. And these alcohol pads are very affordable. Mm -hmm. You could buy them by the thousand pack or whatever from Amazon. And they do a good job cleaning this up. I've never damaged anything with it, but you do have to go through a lot of them. There's probably a better option out there, but you could see, you can get some, uh, just like ink and grime off of there. It really gets bad with the front end of the nib here. It was this, uh, you know, it'll probably get cleaned off when I have it submerged, but I really want to get all the big pieces off that way, or the big chunks or whatever it is, however you describe this, sections of dried on ink. If I could remove them now, it'll make the uh, soaking and the cleaning process that much easier. And you can see it's taken off that that black ink fairly well, and I don't really have to apply any pressure to this. Okay, so the cleaning is done, and now I'm just doing a quick inspection of the nib unit here, and uh, it seems to be in pretty good shape. It got nice and clean, so no problems with that. And it's 100% uh, dry now as well, so I gave it some time. There seems to be some scuffing down here. I thought that was just ink, but I think the uh, finish has sort of worn off there. Uh, I don't really know what's going on. It looks like I could feel it. It's a little, a little bit roughed up. So maybe the pen was kind of mistreated a little bit. Maybe it was being like kind of jammed on like that. I don't really know. Is this piece over here seems to be in okay shape? But that's one of the joys of getting a, uh, a used pen. This seems to be the only real damage to it. And then, uh, for the record, I haven't re removed the nib or feed yet. It is possible to remove the feed and nib from these Rotring 600 fountain pens, but I wouldn't recommend it. The feed is uh, relatively fragile, and it's quite hard to replace given the age of the pen. Some other Rotrings from the same vintage have feeds you could buy more cheaply and you can kind of get it in there but it's not always a perfect fit and you're still going through uh 20 and 30 dollar plus pens in order to restore this uh this rotring 600 if you do need to get feed uh, and i don't need the nib swap here either because it's a medium which is a pretty nice size so i haven't pulled this out it is a friction fit so technically i think you could just pull it out i think people just use that little that little notch right there and they kind of force it out but I'm not going to try it. I don't want to damage it, and it seems to be in pretty good working shape. I will get this going now. I haven't tried it yet, but I'm going to use this. This is just a standard Schneider Blue 
uh, standard international cartridge. So I'm going to pop that in here and then hopefully this thing will start writing relatively soon. So that went smoothly. That's good. I don't know how quickly this pen is going to start. Uh, I may need a few minutes. So I'll give it a little bit and see how it goes. Oh, there it goes. It's writing. It's a really good sign. It means the feed wasn't too dirty, which is a really nice sign. I did a good clean there with that uh, cleaning fluid, which probably helped a lot more than just kind of warm water. But now it's writing really smoothly. The nib seems to be undamaged. It's a very stiff nib, so you're not going to get a lot of line variation. Just uh, just a little bit, but it seems to be working well. And I'm going to use this one for a few days and see how it performs. So I've been using the fountain pen for a few hours now, and it's writing well and flowing quite nicely. But I have noticed that the ink has started to sort of bleed onto or leak onto the section here. The pattern of the ink is almost like how that brass was worn down. So I'm wondering if that was maybe not from mistreatment, but maybe just over the years, the uh, ink had been kind of getting onto the, uh, onto the nib section right here and was actually starting to uh, wear down or corrode the coating a little bit. It's hard to say what ink was in there and how long it sat like that, but this seems like a possibility. So it's not spitting ink or anything like that. And it's not dripping ink. There's no drops coming out. Uh, so it's very well behaved. But clearly the ink is over here. It's starting to smear. It's uh, unsightly. And it uh, hasn't gotten on my hands yet. But I'm sure that's the next thing to happen. So uh, in the uh, short term, you can definitely clean this off. And now we're kind of getting the pen back into the state. How it arrived, which is interesting. I wonder if that... The way it arrived was not that it was put away dirty for an extended period of time. It, it might have just been cleaned up before it got to me, and the ink just sort of ran out over the past couple of days while I was in transit. Now we could see the areas where that ink is coming off, and the areas where it's not really coming off is where the section is sort of corroded down a little bit. And as I'm doing this, I could even feel... You may be able to just hear that it's not as smooth as it should be. That's because that brass is just a little bit rough, kind of from, I don't know, it gets de it's deteriorated, I guess. And you could probably just see a little hint of gold over there where that uh, the silver has come off. Anyway, so I think what I'm going to do next is try to reseat the nib and the feed. It's really unfortunate because they, they're lined up pretty much perfectly. I'm wondering if it was from the factory like this, but uh, this sort of leaking is just really, it's really not great. And I'd like to fix that. So the first thing I'm going to do to uh, try to fix this, I'm not going to pull the nib and the feed entirely. Just the chance of breaking it for me seems rather high uh, if I'm going to do that. So I'm just going to try to push it in and uh, just sort of reseat it, give it a little bit of a twist or a wiggle maybe, and just see what I could do uh, the, I don't feel like cleaning it, so I'll just do it like this, even though it's not really best practice. Didn't feel any movement there, but uh, I'll try it again. And then I guess ultimately I'm just going to give it a couple more hours, probably overnight, and see, you know, with some gentle use, if any more ink comes out there. Okay, so that was a fair bit of pressure. I don't think it moved at all, but uh, we'll see if it did the job. Okay, so it's been the better part of a week using this Rotring 600 fountain pen, and it's all going well, but we've had no changes in the sort of staining and uh, leakage on the nib. After a day or so, 
of leaving it on its own, this is what it's going to look like. Clearly dirty here and some, uh, you know, the messiness on the nib, but it's writing nicely and it's not getting worse. There's no ink draining into here. There's no leaking, which is the most important thing. There's just some sort of, I guess, seepage or something like that happening. And uh, over time, it's going to hurt the brass or hurt the brass more. But uh, the pen's actually, it looks messy, but it works. You know, I wish in the description when I purchased it, it had been described accurately. But honestly, it was a very good deal. So uh, this can become a Roachring 600 that I'm happy to use and don't have to feel bad about, uh, you know, possibly messing up the condition of this excellent, uh, you know, uh, excellent uh, vintage fountain pen. You know, if this thing was brand new factory condition, maybe you don't want to use it. But if it has some miles on it and it's been, you know, damaged or whatever you want to call it, then I uh, definitely don't have to feel bad about using it and running through its paces. It's writing very nicely. I have no real complaints with it. I think the nib has a little bit of scratchiness, which probably has come from uh, just being used over the years, but that'd be very easy to tweak and really nail in just maybe five minutes work. And you can see writing nicely, no drips. So this, uh, this issue seems somewhat contained. I have cleaned it a few times over the week and I have tried to push that feed further in, but I have pushed as hard as I'm really willing to go. And it didn't, I tested it and to see if it would come out and it didn't come out that easily. So I gave up on pulling it. I said, you know what, it's working now. Aesthetically, I have some problems with, you know, the sort of what's happening here, but honestly, the pen is actually writing nicely and I'd rather use it and have it have to clean it off every few days than have to uh, possibly break that feed and then go ahead and buy a Roachering Esprit or a Freeway or one of those pens of this generation, possibly have to buy two or three of them, depending on if I uh, get the model right, and then go ahead and swap the nib or swap the feed, I guess, and then hope it works and not have to worry about having the same issue again. So that, that, that would be a, a frustrating exercise, especially when I'm starting off with a pen that's working quite nicely. So uh, I think that's actually kind of where we're at with this Roachring 600. It's been a fun pickup. I've really enjoyed using this week. I'm uh, going to I'm going to continue using this one. It's writing nicely. Been through a cartridge or so already and it uses, you know, standard cartridges in it. I'm using the Schneider Blue. And uh, I don't say I have no complaints, but it's been a lot of fun to work with and having one of these that I could use as a daily driver again it has been a lot of fun. So that should wrap it up with the Roachring 600 fountain pen. Thanks for watching.